Now I'm going to teach you a lot more than you ever thought you knew about spark plugs and it's not actually too boring. Spark plugs come in all shapes and sizes but all work the same. They have numbers on them. The numbers identify the type of resistor in them in here, the length here, the heat range, the shape, I mean not the shape, the size of the hexagon here. It just identifies the spark plug overall. Almost every spark plug has a number in its code. Not every time, but most of the time, the number means the heat range. A lower number means it's a hotter spark plug, and I'll explain now what that means. This particular spark plug is a very common one for off-road machines. Snowmobiles, four-stroke engines, two-stroke engines, dirt bikes, you know, quads, even street bikes. It's a number seven, which is considered a little bit hot, but that's actually the way I like them. Here's the number eight. Well, it runs a little bit cooler. That means that the way the insulator is designed and the length that it travels down that space that's around it in here dissipates more heat into the body of the spark plug, which then goes into the block of the engine, and that makes the tip run a little bit cooler. Well, in some ways that's an advantage, in some way that's a disadvantage, and I think for off-roading, if you're not doing extreme riding, that's a disadvantage. You see this one's got a lot bigger space around it and a lot longer depth inside so there's not the area to transfer the heat away to the spark plug and then to the block so the tip runs hotter. Well the advantage of the tip running hotter is it stays cleaner longer there's a strong potential that your spark plug will last longer before fouling up. Now the reason why they give spark plugs heat ranges is is because they protect your engine. They're designed that when they get too hot like your engine runs out of coolant or you're idling too long or there's not enough airflow or you're driving it just too hard or there's too much pre-ignition because the timing's set wrong that it'll get so hot that the little tip will glow red and this little tip too when they glow red something unique happens the metal in the tip becomes non-ferrous the name for this is austentic that means that the atomic structure has changed to a different shape just like the way water molecules to ice molecules change their shape. The tip becomes like this heating element, very resistive. This heating element uses a mixture of nickel and steel, and that makes an authentic mixture even when cool, and more authentic when heat is or I mean electricity is added and it gets warm. That means higher resistance. The reason you want higher resistance in your spark plug under extreme conditions is to prevent a hole forming in your piston because the crown of the piston will melt and get blown through, to prevent your head cracking, to prevent your to cause your engine to misfire and stall so it won't keep running when it's too hot because something could be wrong. So it protects your engine. Ferrous metal, which means it's a magnet can pick it up, is in its authentic stage because of heat or alloying it, it loses its magnetic properties and its conductive properties. It's really odd that nickel is very ferrous and a magnet picks it up perfectly when it's pure and steel or iron is very ferrous and a magnet picks it up perfectly fine when it's pure but when you mix the two together at the right amount no, a magnet will no longer pick them up that's called non-magnetic stainless steel so most off-road machines seem to just come with eights well I recommend in cases where you're not getting a whole year out of a spark plug maybe even a month or two, you change it to a 7 and you'll probably do a lot better. Now for your car spark plugs, since they have a liquid cooled motor and work under pretty you know, similar conditions every day, summer or winter, and you're usually not racing or anything, I wouldn't recommend changing the type of spark plug you put in your car other than just improving it to a platinum or a multi-tip one or something you know more advantageous for long life or a little bit better performance. This one's a platinum plug. Platinum plugs have a lot smaller tip. Well, there's two reasons for that. One is platinum's ex very expensive. It's more expensive than gold. So the smaller the tip, the more money they save. But two, the spark has a defined point where it can jump. It just can't jump all over that flat surface that's on a larger tip, old-fashioned spark plug. This makes better control of burning the fuel and possibly better performance in fuel economy. So that's why they're like that. Platinum plugs are always better than regular plugs. 
They will last two to three times as long, and if you have a car that's difficult to tune up, that's a big advantage. Some cars, like newer style Camaros, you've got to partially remove the motor to get at the spark plugs and other vehicles. You've got to take the engine half apart because you can't even see the spark plugs. Now in the tip of all modern spark plugs, except a few lawnmower spark plugs, there's a resistor in here. It's usually made out of graphite or carbon. Resistors aren't good for letting all the electricity go through, but they're kind of necessary in modern vehicles because of electronics in them and the fact that spark plugs that don't have resistors emit radio noise. That's the sound that high voltage makes like lightning in the air and you hear your radio crackle. Well that can interfere with the electronics on your vehicle and it certainly mess up the sound of your stereo system and that would suck. Here's a typical spark plug wire off a 2.8 General Motors V6. Well they're actually not wires. They're called high tension leads because they don't actually contain any wire. I cut this one open. You can see this little cable inside that carries electricity. Well that's made out of a polymer substance, like a plastic, impregnated with graphite, which is a pretty good conductor. So it's actually a resistance wire. But since there's so little load going through there, the resistance doesn't have much effect on the voltage output at the end. And this, of course, causes it not to act like a radiating antenna, radiating a noise of a spark to your electronics or to your radio. So these do wear out. Because this isn't actually a wire, the longer you use your engine, you know, the more miles on it, the higher the resistance this cable gets. You can measure that with your meter to tell if they're good. The other problem with wires is that the polymer coating on them, or, or often it's a silicone coating, deteriorates too, because high voltage likes to break things down. And then on damp days, or if your wire's too near something on a day when it's not right or the wire gets wet, the spark will arc through the wire and your car will misfire. Now to test your spark plug wires to see if they're good or not or need changed, except for the plastic part of them, or the silicone part of them, you set your meter to K ohms. That means thousands of ohm scale. You can see the little K. Well this particular wire is reading 11.4 K ohms, so that's 11,400 ohms resistance. That's at the borderline of being good. The way I kind of judge spark plug wires, if they're under 12K, they're considered good. Of course, it depends on the length of the wire too. The longer the wire, the higher the resistance. The shorter the wire, the lower the resistance. If this was a very short spark plug wire, say one of those ones that's about this long, the resistance might only be 3 or 4K. If you have a vehicle that's multi-cylindered and every time you step on the throttle it has like a rhythmic hesitation, like ta 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 that most likely means that there's a burnt spot inside this cable on one, of the, you know, on one of the wires of your engine. So when the engine's not running fast, the spark can, is able to jump the burnt spot in the gap and the car runs smooth. As soon as you accelerate hard and the RPMs pick up and the compression in the engine increases because you've got wide open throttle, all of a sudden the spark can't jump that gap and I'll explain why. Air is an insulator. Spark does not like to jump through air. Sparks love to jump through vacuums. But the more you accelerate, the more air that's getting in your engine and that is more of an insulator between the gap of your spark plug. And then of course the next problem is your piston compresses that air. So then there's ten times more air or nine times more air compressed between that gap because of the compression ratio. So that's why ignition coils, or whatever you want to call them, produce so much electricity, such a high voltage, like average around 35,000, 30 to 35,000 volts. Well, that kind of voltage can make a spark that can jump around an inch. But you wonder why it has a hard time jumping that little gap under these conditions. Well, since air is an insulator, the more you squeeze it, the more it gets between the gap, the harder it becomes for that spark to jump that gap. So if you make your gap a little bit too big, then your car might misfire. Or if the plug is heating up too much and becoming authentic, the plug might misfire. Well, here's a typical distributor cap. If you think your car is misfiring, the best thing to do is identify which cylinder it's misfiring on. It's not a good idea on many cars to pull off the end that goes to the spark plug because that wire is still live. If you pull it off while you're, it's running, you'll get a shock very often. What you want to do is have your engine idling pull off one wire at a time and then put it back on 
and you do it from the cap, that's a good place to do it. And then you probably won't get a shock. Now you want to see which cylinder it makes no difference on when you pull the wire off, and that's the cylinder that's not running. So the first thing you do is check its resistance, check to see that there's no arcing along the wire, and then the next thing you do is pull that spark plug out and see if it's not fouled up and shorted. On many modern engines, the spark plug wire has this extension thing on it. That's because it's got a hemispherical head. It's very common that a little tiny pinhole burns in here that you most times can't even see, but sometimes you see a gray haze around it. And this causes your car to misfire too, especially when accelerating. And there is a redneck repair to fix that. Just dry it all off and wrap it in several layers of electrical tape and it's fixed for a while. Cool. Now another crazy thing about spark plugs and air being an insulator is the spark plugs will get shorted sometimes more often in off-road machines and small engines than cars. Well, when they're shorted, the tip is almost always wet looking and shiny black. Well, that makes it easier for the electricity to run down the, the ceramic insulator that's in the middle of the tip and go all the way down inside the body and short out, then jump that little gap. But it's deceiving, very deceiving. If you pull your spark plug out, put it against the side of the engine with your wire connected to it and crank the engine over, you'll see the spark plug jumping the gap just fine. But if you put it back in your engine and crank it again, the spark won't jump the gap. It'll go down the insulator, but you can't see that. So you have to predict the spark plug is shorted just by looking at the conditions of it. And that could be why your engine's not firing at all. So just change the spark plug or heat it up with a torch till it turns red hot and that'll burn off the coating on it and often bring it back to life temporarily.